Hello VC, what's going on? It's me, Will, and I'm back with a music update video. And, uh, and this is not gonna be uh, one of my regular new music videos uh, because some of the releases that I have to show you today are not exclusively uh, new releases. I got some older records, uh, some singles, some CDs, uh, and also some new releases as well. So a little bit of everything <laughs> in this video. So let's go ahead and get started with this. Um, uh, this one is a new release. Uh, this one came out last year in 2020. And this is the newest record from uh, the legendary ba punk band Screeching Weasel. And this one's called Some Freaks of Atavism. And it's their, their newest release. It came out last year in 2020 on Rhesus Records. Great new record from the legendary punk band from uh, Chicago, led by frontman um, ben Weasel. And yeah, this one came out on uh, Rhesus Records and I got the pre-order version on kind of like a maroon or red marbled vinyl with the custom labels. And uh, yeah, I was uh, glad that I was able to get, a, to get a, a vinyl copy of this one because they only have very limited pressings uh, of this record. And I was surprised to actually see a physical copy of this album uh, because when, when this album came out last year in 2020 uh, it came out only as a digital release and uh, some on streaming and I actually listened to a podcast where Ben Weasel the lead singer was being interviewed and he essentially said that the band doesn't really make that much money out of selling physical records um, and considering the time, the effort of uh, putting the records out and shipping them, I guess the margins that they make are really very, very small. Uh, so he said that they were not going to release uh, the, this record, the newest album, on, uh, on physical format. Uh, but finally, at the end of last year, they announced, or Research Record announced that they were going to do a very limited run uh, of pressings of uh, this one. And uh, I think they announced the first pressing and, uh, of 300 copies and it sold out immediately, uh, like right away. And I missed out on the first pressing, I missed out on the second pressing and on the third pressing I finally was able to, to get or pre-order this one. So I was glad to add it uh, to my cart on this one because it was uh, very limited. Uh, but I was surprised that uh, um, Ben was saying that they don't, don't really make that much money of this one because there's, there's definitely a big demand for physical format, especially nowadays on traditional or classic punk bands like Screeching Weasel. And this record is very, very good. A very classic, uh, kind of like a traditional punk rock band from the early 90s. Uh, uh, with this type of music, it's very difficult to innovate and to make their music sound fresh when they come up with new records. Very few bands can do that. Screeching Weasel is definitely one of them. So in case you you like the, the kind of uh, 90s punk style bands, uh, check out this one. This, this one sounds great. All right, the, the next uh, release that I have to show you is also um, it's a new release, but uh, from an old recording. Uh, this is the Screaming Females with their Chalk Tape EP. And it came out... Um, uh, this release came out on uh, Don Giovanni Records. Uh, the original um, uh, of this uh, of this EP came out back in 2013, and it was released only on cassette, and it was only sold at uh, one of their shows, and it sold out immediately. Uh, so Don Giovanni released it on vinyl for the first time uh, this year, uh, and uh, yeah, they did it all only as a pre-order, so you had to pre-order to get this one. I'm a big, uh, big fan of this band, so I decided to pick uh, uh, to pre-order the Chalk Tape EP. Only seven songs EP from the Screaming Females, a punk rock band from uh, from New Jersey, and this one came in just a regular black vinyl with the custom labels. And yeah, I'm, I'm glad that they actually did a release on vinyl on this one as well because uh, I'm not a cassette collector, uh, so. Uh, but I'm still a big fan of the Screaming Females and this record or this EP sounds just exactly like uh, the Screaming Females. Hard-hitting, punk rock, fast-paced. The vocals from Marisa Paternoster, the singer of the band, are excellent in this EP. Uh, some very catchy songs in this one too. Uh, check it out, the Screaming Females with uh, the Chalk Tape EP. 
And even though this one, this, this one came out only as a one-time pressing uh, pre-order uh, of, uh, of uh, this release, you can still find it on the streaming services uh, like uh, Spotify. And speaking of the Screaming Females, I got this one, I think it was last year or the year before. Uh, I picked it up only on CD. And it's also the Screaming Females with their compilation called, uh, this is called Singles 2. And it came out in uh, 2019 also on Don Giovanni Records. And I, again, I'm a huge fan of the Screaming Females, so I picked this one too. And this one is a compilation of some of their songs that came out on 7-inch singles, uh, some B-sides, some um, some cover songs, and some remixes as well. As well. And I picked it up on CD because uh, the CD copy has more tracks, it has more songs. Um, I think it, this one includes uh, six of the cover songs that they did. They had some killer uh, cover songs in this CD. They have Cortez the Killer, from originally from Neil Young. They have If It Makes You Happy, originally from um, uh, Sheryl Crow. They have Because the Night, that they played with Garbage, that I think it was originally by Patti Smith. They also have A Good, uh, a good Flying Bird, as from um, as a cover from Guided by Voices. They also have Shake It Off, from Taylor Swift. And No More I Love You's, from the Eurythmics. Uh, all the, the, the cover songs are great. Alright, up next I also picked up um, a repress or a reissue of a what I think it's a classic indie rock album. This is uh, Courtney Barnett with um, sometimes, I uh, sometimes I Sit and Think and Sometimes I Just Sit. I always love the, uh, the, the album title on this one. And this one came out orig originally in 2015 on Mom and Pop Records. And um, yeah, a classic indie rock album that came out back in, in 2015. I can't believe it's been already almost six years since this record came out because this one still sounds so fresh and so good. Um, and I uh, did pick this one up when it came out back in 2015, 15, but only on CD. I did not have a vinyl copy, so I was glad to add it to my vinyl collection. I found it on a record store a few years ago. I just never really got a chance to show it to you and it came out on kind of like a translucent orange vinyl with the custom labels. And uh, the interesting thing about this record is that I went through Discogs and I could not find this, this release or this pressing uh, on Discogs. The closest one that I saw uh, on, on the website was uh, the original press of the record that came out on the ex exact same color vinyl. Uh, everything looks exactly the same except the uh, the hype sticker. The hype sticker on the original says original press in the top. This one says uh, limited press vinyl. And it also came, out, came in with the with a, a poster from Mom and Pop Records celebrating, I think, their, uh, their 20th anniversary, I think. Uh, so uh, it makes me think that this is a uh, repress that they did a few years ago uh, that ends up looking almost exactly the same as the original. And yeah, it sounds great. If you haven't checked this one out, do yourself a favor and check and pick up pick, uh, pick up a copy of uh, of this one because it's a classic uh, modern uh, album in my opinion. So, uh, the lyrics are just so clever. The the music is so catchy and Courtney's voice is excellent. Just check it out. It's a great record. All right, uh, I don't really have that many, uh, uh, many more as full-length albums to show you in this video because I haven't really got that many in, in this month. Uh, but uh, just to complement the video, I'm gonna show you some seven-inch singles that I don't think I've shown in my in my videos uh, before. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, this one I picked up a few months ago. This one is the seven-inch single from Dinosaur Jr. It was this one was a record store find. Uh, this one's called. Third Man Records Blue Room Sessions. So obviously comes comes in from Third Man Records and it was released in 2018. Big fan of the band, so I had to pick this one up. And uh, uh, this is a live recording from Nashville, from Third Man Records, of uh, two songs from the last album, which by the way I think they're the best songs from that record. Going down and the B side is Tiny. Great, great tracks uh, from Dinosaur Jr. And I, uh, I missed out on the color vinyl version of this one. I just got the black vinyl with um, Third Man Records labels. 
uh, great, great sounding record. Obviously, uh, almost anything that comes from Third Man Records is great sounding, and this one is no exception. And by the way, I think Dinosaur Jr. is going to come up with a new record this year, so really looking forward to that new record. And I'm glad to add this one to my Dinosaur Jr. collection. All right, another 7-inch single that I picked up. This one was, I, I got it uh, at least a few years ago in a record store called Joint Custody. You can see the, the tag right there. It's in Washington, D.C. And um, when I travel, I try to go to record stores to see if I find something uh, that I really want. And I really wanted this one. This is Super Chunk, uh, a 7-inch single for... Uh, Majestic and the B-side is a song called Reg early super chunk from 1999 on Merch Records and you can see that it's a kind of like an early release for super chunk because it looks really DIY like a very do-it-yourself release with the uh, this kind of sleeve the vinyl came in on standard black vinyl with the custom labels they also came in with a cool little flyer uh, where you can order some of the other releases from Merch Records and it says November 1998 So a really cool piece of history. I had never seen it before so I picked it up especially because it was a very good price And I'm not a huge Super Chunk collector especially from their 7 inch singles uh, Because they just have so many out there and most of them are kind of hard to find But whenever I find one at a good price, I'll pick it up because um, it's great Super Chunk Especially early Super Chunk is just uh, fantastic and again, this one was really great. Uh, all right, uh, the next one that I have to show you is also another record store pickup from one of my travels. I went to San Francisco uh, two years ago. I think it was in 2019. Um, and I stopped uh, at a record store called uh, 1234 Go Records, which is, uh, I think it's partly owned by Billy Joe Armstrong from Green Day. I found a couple of good 70 singles there. And this one is one of them. This one's Kamala and the Carnivores uh, with Girl Band. And this is a 7-inch EP with four songs from Lookout Records and it came out uh, in 1989. Great punk band from the 90s. Uh, they um, uh, they're, were uh, from the same scene that Green Day came out back in the early 90s of the Gilman Street Street uh, scene uh, in the Bay Area. Uh, they were one of the bigger bands out, over there too. And this is one of the original presses of the, of the EP. So you can see also very DIY, originally from Lookout Records. And um, the vinyl came in just in standard black vinyl with uh, really cool custom labels. Yeah, girl band from Camel and the Carnivores. Uh, very reminiscent of early Go-Go's. <laughs> I was just re-listening to this one and I realized how much I, I, I love this EP. Especially the song Back to Bodhi. That's, in my opinion, is a classic punk rock band from the 90s. It's the second track in Side A. Check this one out. It's also on Spotify in case you want to listen to this one. Alright, then speaking of Gilman Street, uh, the last uh, the last 7 inch single that I have to show you for this video uh, is uh, this one right here. It's uh, Green Day with Live at Gilman Street and it came out in 1993 or I guess it was recorded in 1993 and it came out uh, as a, uh, it's not in a label, it's a, it's a bootleg uh, and I don't collect bootlegs from Green Day but if I find one uh, that I haven't seen before at a decent price I'll pick it up. I think I paid uh, $15 for this one so it's kind of expensive for, for a 7 inch single but uh, either way, I decided not to miss on this one because I had never seen it before. And uh, this one has three tracks, Long View, Better Not Come Around, or I guess When I Come Around, before it was When I Come Around, and Don't Leave Me, which is an older Green Day song. And this one was, was recorded in 1993, right before Dookie came out, their uh, breakthrough album. And it says, recorded at Gil Gilman Street, put out by fans, for fans right here in the bottom. Uh, very cool right there. And uh, this one came in just as standard black vinyl with uh, blank labels. Uh, interesting release. I never heard it before. Uh, what's really interesting is in the first two tracks, the two tracks from Dookie, 
and I'm not sure if the lyrics for the song were not final yet or just maybe Billy Joe forgot the lyrics of the songs but he sings it with them when he sings it they're in a completely different ly lyrics especially in, in Longview uh, or at least part of them they are not the right lyrics from the studio release uh, so again I don't know if it's just because he forgot the lyrics or because they were not final yet but an interesting piece of history right here uh, and Don't Leave Me is an older release from Green Day uh, and it's kind of interesting that this one came out and um, recorded from Gilman Street uh, because Green Day, uh, many of you may know, that ended up getting banned from playing at Gilman Street uh, when they were, decided to move on to a major label after two independent releases. Um, they were banned from playing there because the community did not allow bands to play at Gilman Street that went into a major label. Uh, they considered it to be uh, against their, uh, their punk rock ethics uh, when they were selling out. Uh, I, th I think they didn't play in Gilman Street until uh, just very, fairly recently when they um, decided to play a, a gig there uh, for a reunion or for a, I guess for a, for an event for Gilman Street. Uh, all right, VC, that's all I have to show you for this for uh, for this video. I hope to be back soon for another uh, new music update video, hopefully in early February. Uh, hope everybody's doing well. Thank you for watching and take care. Bye bye.